I'm going to talk to you about alkane resources. And here we actually have a photo of one of our operators, uh, Casey, who won the last year at the Minerals Council here. She actually won the Australian Operator or Tradesperson of the Year. So pretty proud of that, which is good. So let me, let me tell you a little bit about our company. We were actually incorporated in 1969 and listed on the ASX in the early 1980s. So we've been around a long time. We first produced gold at Peak Hill, which is halfway between Dubbo and Parks, in 1995. We started the mine there, and that ran through until 2004. And during that time, we had a lot of exploration projects all over Australia. But during that time, we discovered near to there um, the deposits that formed Tamingley Gold Mine, which we then went through the approvals process, and we started that mine in 2013. And as you can imagine, I can talk to anybody in the booth about the approvals process, now we go about approving and developing a mine. And then that mine has been running ever since. We put our first gold in 2014. And I'm going to tell you all about that and the exploration projects that we predominantly run now. But first, let me tell you a little bit about the company. We have 600,000, oh, sorry, 600 million shares on issue. Our market capitalization is in and around the $400 million mark. And at the moment, we have just under $110 million in cash and listed investments. And we're going to spend that money extending the life of this mine. And we also have a $50 million undrawn debt facility. Our majority shareholder is our chairman, uh, Mr. Ian Gandle, just under 20%. Very experienced businessman from Melbourne, who's a big supporter of the mining industry. And then our board is filled full of people with you know, extensive experience. Our technical director, Ian Chalmers, uh, well over 40 years exploration experience. And I'll tell you about some of the deposits that he's discovered. So we're basically, think of us as an exploration company that does something with its investments. We either sell them, we either spin them out, or we develop them ourselves. So if we talk a little bit about our, our strengths, our strengths really are that, that we're a stable production outfit that's got cash in hand, knows its way around the systems that are required to get mining done, and also has a long track record of exploration. Let me talk a little bit about some of our highlights. I think the main highlight for us is that we continue to produce profitably and safely. Last year we did 70,000 ounces. The all-in sustaining cost was just in the low $1,600 Aussie an ounce. I only ever talk Australian dollars, sorry. Forgive me, not US dollars as well. And as well as that, we increase the size of our resources. And not only that, but we have a very large gold and copper exploration project called Boda and adjacent to it Kaiser. And they are to the east of Wellington. I'll show you that on a map soon and uh, also in central New South Wales. And we put out our initial resources for that and they total nearly 15 million ounce equivalents. And that's one of our uh, long dated projects where we're looking to add value for shareholders. So here's, here's us. I'll point out a few things uh, on, I'll go to this side, forgive people on this side. Um, so here we are, uh, you know, west of Sydney, we've got Dubbo, we've got Parks, we're in the middle. Over here is Orange, the big Cadia mine. You've got North Parks uh, over here. And the things I'm talking about, I'm talking about Tommingley, halfway between Dubbo and Parks. I'm talking about Boda, between Dubbo and Wellington to the east. They're the main prospects I'm going to talk about. We do have other exploration tenements where we search for gold and also copper, but you know we've discovered other things, iron ore and whatnot, over our lifespan. But we're not searching for that at the moment. Uh, and so I'm going to talk about these locations. So first, Tommingley. So we're now zoomed in on the Tommingley gold mine. This is our mining lease up here. This is our exploration tenements. And I'll um, talk a little more about the expansion that we're doing to the south. But first, let me point out, this year we intend to do around 60 to 65,000 ounces at an all-in sustaining cost of 1750 to 2100. That's mostly because all the costs for our inputs have gone up over the last year. For instance, for us, our 
I, I mean, I'm here talking to people in Sydney, I don't need to tell you, but our power prices went up by 100% uh, when we renewed our contract. Um, so we are on a three yearly contract basis, so our power prices went up by that. It's still cheaper than domestic power prices, but our power prices went up by that. And other input costs, steel and whatnot, have gone up uh, in uh, you know, Australia-wide and industry-wide, so we're not immune from that. Um, we've got 230 employees there. We have about 70 contractors. Our employees, as Andrew talked about in Condoblin with the residential, our employees live in pretty much Dubbo, Narromine and Parks. So again, they're residential, they go home each night, which is great and results in a lower turnover. And we're an underground mine that also had open cuts. And the open cuts are finished and I'm gonna tell you about what we're gonna to do to reestablish that. But most importantly, I think we've got this sort of 1.7 million ounces in resource which keeps expanding. This is a nice chart, which means a lot to me. I'm gonna to have to explain it to everyone. Um, this is just, we, we tend to exceed our guidance. That's because we like to um, surprise and delight rather than perpetually disappoint as a broad strategy. Uh, as well as that, um, we also have a, a gold system that does have a fair amount of visible gold within it, which tends not to be accounted for um, in our estimates as much. And we've increased the resource base, but the graders remain roughly the same. And the Tom Inley Extension Project, we, in the start of this year, we got this area to the south of the mine, so this is our exploration drive coming down to the south of the mine, we got that approved, right? And so that basically took a mine that was finishing in uh, 2025, and we've extended that out to 2032, and our resources are open at depth. So we've already developed this Mine, we, underneath up here, we have a whole heap of underground workings. We've already developed this down here, and this is us expanding this out at present. We'll be mining this new section of the ore body before the end of the year. Fantastic, um, the kind of thing that makes you know, engineers excited, which isn't much, we're reasonably boring people, but um, you know, it's very nice to establish a new mining area, put in new vent fans, um, and the other things that get that up and going. And the other day we did some grade control core and it had visible gold within it and that's very exciting for geologists. So it, it's nice to be opening up this new area of the mine. And as well as that, we have some open cuts to come in the years to come above it. But what we're doing here, of course, is just extending the mine life. And we're gonna increase the throughput rate to around 100,000 ounces a year. We'll do that within the next two years. So th that's the purpose of, of, of what it is. We've done all the different things. You know, I can talk you through them all, come to our booth just out around the corner and into the left. Um, but we're well on the way. As you'd expect, experienced operators have done this many times before to be. We're well on the way to expand this. And of course, our existing operation keeps going. We still have 230 people producing gold uh, up, up to the, slightly to the north. I mentioned how good we were at exploration. Of course, I was gonna say that. We're also bad at some exploration. I mean, exploration has a low success rate, right? So we increase our knowledge and then we drill holes and there's nothing there and we go, hmm. There you go, and we go off somewhere else. But we do have a very good track record of discovery and a really good conversion rate um, for exploration. Very, very successful team. And I think one of the things that one of the things that sets us aside is remember a few years ago, you know, sort of 2013, 2014, the, everything was a little bit poor in the mining sector. A lot of people laid off their exploration teams. We didn't lay off our exploration team, and funnily enough, they made discoveries through that period of time. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Um, so anyway, that's what we do. So we're very loyal to our team and they've been loyal to us. But, and you can see that, you know, San Antonio and Roswell, it's cost us 20 bucks an ounce to explore that and discover that. Boda Kaiser, three bucks an ounce. So the big exploration one that we have is this. Come, we'll explain it to you. You know, Ian, our technical director, who used to be the manning director, my predecessor, will explain that to you. But what we have is an incredibly large gold copper porphyry. These are the type of deposits, I'm not saying it's the same, but the type of deposits like Cadia, like North Parks, and like the whole series of copper deposits that you see in through the Ring of Fire up through PNG um, or over in the Andes Mountains. So these are porphyry deposits, large, lower grade systems. In our particular case, if we look at Boda, at a 0.3 or 0.4 gram equivalent cutoff, this is copper and gold, you know, we've got 600 odd million tonnes that are equivalent ounces of 0.51. And again, Kaiser, you know, 270 million tonnes at a 0.54 equivalent. What does all this mean? 
What this means is, in this section here, which that's five kilometres from here to here, we have uh, 15 million ounce equivalents spread over an enormous rock mass. And so one day, like Katia or North Parks, we believe that we will have a large mine there. So a small operation on a porphyry mine is 10 million tonnes a year. Katia is doing 33 million tonnes a year at present from a, from a block cave. So we believe that we've grabbed that tiger by the tail. And what are we doing at the moment? We're now drilling it out to a density to increase its confidence and allow us to progress with exploration, not exploration, sorry, um, evaluation uh, of it and the mining plans. So we think one day we will have a mine there. To give you an idea, the, just the other day we put out, on Friday we put out a release and we had a, uh, over 1.4 kilometres of mineralisation continuous. So 1.4, so you can start at one end of the Harbour Bridge and arrive at the other end of the Harbour Bridge and you're still standing in our mineralisation that's economic. So that's quite phenomenal and that's why we're spending shareholders' money on exploration. We'll spend nearly $20 million at the moment and then we'll put our... Uh, we'll upgrade the resource at the end of the year and we'll put out our initial economic assessment of that early next year. So that's a big way in exploration that we're creating value. And as well as that, we have other exploration deposits where we think we will find things like this. Certainly, you can, as you can hear, we could talk for hours about this and so I encourage you to come round, talk for hours and then maybe put a business card in Andrew's slot. <laughs> um, so if we look ahead, we're going to do the simple things well. We're going to get the studies that I just spoke about out across this financial year. We're going to keep testing high grade extensions. Actually, on Friday as well, we pointed out that we have a large higher grade bit with several grams per tonne equivalent down about 800, to a km, 800 metres to a kilometre deep into the west of that, which is a higher grade, more profitable portion. So we're going to continue to test for those because they make a big difference to economics. We're going to put those resources out at the end of the year. We're just going to get on with getting it done at Tommingley because that's where our cash flow comes from and that's what people are looking for for us as a reliable producer. We're going to get that mining going at Roswell and we're already mining there, but I mean production mining. By the end of the year, we've got grey control drill rigs on it at the moment, as I mentioned, and we've got the vent rise just breaking through in the next two weeks. So we're going to be doing that. We are expanding, we're putting in a pace fill plant to let us increase ore recovery underground. So basically when you leave a hole, you backfill it with a really low grade cement so you can blow up the ore next to it and then get full ore recovery. We're putting one of those in. We've got that underway at present and we're also upgrading our process plant to increase its recovery. And then we're going to continue to actively manage investments. We've, you know, over the last couple of years, we've done some, I call it my most successful, unsuccessful M&A in that we took positions in other companies and didn't actually do any M&A in terms of merging or acquiring. Instead, we just made a large profit from the shareholders, shares that we made. So it's, you know, successful, but we'll continue to actively manage those investments. We would like to grow. We would like to have other uh, production assets, but we would much prefer to make money for shareholders rather than just do those two things. So we continue to evaluate opportunities to do that. And that is us. Thank you.